Okay. Um, okay, great. So let me close uh, this one. So hi, uh, I'm Thomas Groendijk and I'm an integration MVP from the Netherlands. And I'm going to talk about to modify and to an extent uh, the ESB toolkit. And in this presentation, I'm going to show you uh, several examples uh, to extend and to modify the ESB toolkit. So uh, first, a small introduction about myself. Um, well, I'm Thomas Groenendijk. I live in the Netherlands, uh, in Rotterdam. And I'm a Bissel con uh, consultant at Motion 10. Uh, Motion 10 is a company in the Netherlands that is specialized in uh, SharePoint, uh, BizTalk, and uh, BI. Um, last year, I became an uh, integration MVP. Uh, I, write, uh, I wrote a lot of blog posts about uh, BizTalk and the ESB toolkit. Uh, I also created several samples uh, of the ESB toolkit uh, that I posted on MSDN. And tonight, I'm going to tell you uh, something about these samples. So how they work, um, how you can uh, install them, and how you can use them in an itinerary. So an overview, uh, what we're going to do today. Um, first, a very small introduction uh, of the ESB toolkit. Um, for, for if you're not really that familiar with the ESB toolkit, um, I'm not really going to spend much time on the introduction. Um, uh, only to get uh, familiar with the terminology, and that's because um, while we don't really have a lot of time, I want to do a, a lot of demos uh, or several demos. Um, so um, only a very small introduction, I'm afraid. Um, then we're going to talk about um, itinerary services, so uh, a messaging service and also an orchestration service. Um, we're going to talk about uh, resolvers, so how you can create a resolver. And um, in the demo, I'm going to use the Sentinet resolver uh, from Nefatech. Um, and then the last part, I'm going to tell you about custom extenders. So how can you create a custom extender for an itinerary service? Um, and then uh, it's time for questions. So first, uh, well, rethinking uh, your solution uh, as a set of capabilities. So with the ESB toolkit, what, we're, what you want to do is um, rethink your solution. Uh, because with the ESB toolkit, um, you want to create reusable components um, that you can use in multiple scenarios. Because uh, when you compare it with normal BizTalk, uh, for example, uh, you create an orchestration for um, uh, that's for a specific message type, and most of the times it's also for a specific scenario. Well, in that case, it's it's difficult uh, to reuse your orchestration. Well, with the ESB toolkit, it's just the other way around. Um, first, you're going to think, can I create um, an orchestration that is reusable um, so that you can use it for multiple message types um, and in multiple scenarios? So in this picture, what you see is several, uh, you see an itinerary. So an itinerary is, 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 is a routing slip. Eh? A routing slip, what you uh, can attach to your message. And you also see uh, the services. Uh, well, a services can be a messaging service. And a messaging service is, well, in the end, it's you can compare it with the pipeline component. Uh, and you also have um, orchestration services. And orchestration services, um, well, are based on orchestration. But what you normally have, or, or out of the box with the ESB toolkit, you have a routing service and a transformation service. And when you want to use it in, an, well, in a real life or a, a scenario, uh, or a real world scenario, I want to say, um, well, you, you have to create your own custom services. Um, and also in the ESB toolkit, uh, you talk about on ramps uh, and off ramps. And while well, that's in the end, uh, an on ramp is, is a receive port and an off ramp is a send port. But also with, with on ramps and, and off ramps, you want to reuse them uh, for, for multiple message types. And so it's all about reusing. So when we talk about components, um, 
the ESB toolkit components are, are based on the normal pistol components uh, and, uh, and, and are built on top of, uh, on top of them. Um, and in this presentation, I'm going to focus uh, on some of the core components of the ESB toolkit, uh, what you see in the red box. And these are uh, resolvers uh, and itinerary services. Um, and first, I'm going to tell you um, how you can, uh, because this presentation is all about extending. So first, I'm going to tell you uh, how you can extend uh, itinerary services. Um, well, the first part or the first one I want to show you is how to create uh, a custom messaging service. Um, so what I already told is that uh, a messaging service is based on uh, a pipeline component, but in the end it's all about, it's, it's, it's a class. Uh, so um, a messaging service is a class that is executed uh, by the dispatcher pipeline component, and the dispatcher pipeline component um, is a component in the or or a pipeline component in the ESB toolkit uh, framework. And a messaging service is executed, or that uh, is a class that is executed uh, by the pipeline component. So when you want to create your own messaging service, it's similar to when you create your own uh, component or your own pipeline component. Um, it's almost the same code, um, but in the end it's much easier because uh, it's only a class. Eh? And with a pipeline component, um, well, you also have to deploy it uh, in Visual Studio to, um, to a toolbox, for example. Now, with a pipeline, with a, with a messaging service, you don't have to do that. Um, you only have to deploy it to the global assembly cache. So for what scenarios can you use um, or can you create your own messaging service? Um, for example, your own validation or tracking and tracing um, yeah, or your own custom processing of a message. So uh, it's all about demos. Um, so in the first demo, um, I'm going to create a custom uh, messaging service. And what I've done is I've created a messaging service that uh, tracks a message to MongoDB. Now, MongoDB is uh, a NoSQL uh, database. And I've already created uh, the project and I already created the messaging service. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the code and I'm going to show you how you can add uh, the service to an itinerary. And also, we're going to run the example. So, uh, well, uh, it's a live demo, so hopefully it's going to work. And, um, well, let's see. So, first, I'm going to open uh, the project. So, hopefully, everybody can see this. Um, I've already created a, a trackings project. And when you create your own messaging service, um, it has to be based on the, the iMessaging service. Um, and you have to implement an execute uh, method. And within the execute method, method um, you have to, um, well, uh, do the magic. And what I've done is I've created a custom uh, method, and in this method I'm doing the tracking. So I'm not going to walk through all the code, but uh, I can show you here. I'm calling the MongoDB manager, and with the MongoDB manager I'm uh, adding the message uh, to, to MongoDB. So what you have to do to, uh, to make it run or to, to, to use this in your itinerary, um, first you have to build uh, your message, or sorry, your uh, your messaging service. So you build it, and then you have to put it in a GAG, so in a global assembly cache. Well, here what I can do is um, in Visual Studio, uh, if you deploy it or if you uh, you have the deployment framework, uh, you can do it right here. Uh, normally uh, you do it in a proper way, but 
this is a demo, so I can do it. Uh, I could do it in Visual Studio. So now the assembly is uh, successfully added to the cache. Um, and when you want to use uh, use it in an itinerary, uh, you have to add it to the esb.config. So the esb.config is located in the ESB toolkit uh, <coughs> folder. And this configuration file, when you open it, you have also a part where you see all the itinerary services. And here you have to add your own service. And this is only needed uh, when you want to use it in Visual Studio. So in your runtime environment, uh, your production environment, um, you don't have to add it, but here we are in, in a development environment and we want to use it in Visual Studio. So here you have to add your uh, your custom service. Uh, so here we have a tracking service. Now you see uh, this is the DLL. Uh, so this is the assembly. So when you, well, I already added it here, so uh, I don't have to save the esb.config. And now we're going to the live part because, uh, uh, because, um, we want to see it uh, working. Um, so in an, I also have another project where I have all the itineraries. I already created some itineraries, but, um, well, sorry, this is the wrong. So let me open the correct project. So here I have the itineraries. I've already created an itinerary. Well, if it's going to open. And in, in this itinerary, it's a very basic itinerary. First, I'm going to transform a message, and these components are out of the box. So these services, what we see here, are out of the box. Uh, we see uh, a pipeline component uh, or a messaging service. The messaging services are blue. Um, also, let me open the properties. So, hopefully, you're able to see all these properties. Um, so, first, uh, the messaging service. Um, well, when you specify in the, in the folder, I've specified uh, a map or. Uh, because this is a transformation service. And in the routing service, I'm going to route the message to a file. Um, and in this case, it's very uh, simple. Uh, I'm using a static resolver. So in this resolver, I specify uh, where I'm going to write the file to. And now I want to add also my custom tracking service. So how we can do that? Well, for example, um, when you use a messaging service, you have to attach it uh, to an on-ramp or an off-ramp well, because um, it's a class that has to be executed uh, by a pipeline component. So we have to attach it, in this case, to the on-ramp. Well, first you have to delete uh, this line. And I'm going to add the messaging service. Well, let me create some space here. So. So here I have my own service. And now I want to specify that it is my service. So first we have to say it's a messaging uh, extender. And then here I have my own custom tracking service. And that's because I've uh, added it to the esb.config. Well, I can copy this. Yeah, so it's a little bit nicer. Um, and I also have to specify a resolver. So with the resolver, I specify where I want to write my uh, the data to. Well, I'm going to add a new resolver. And I also have a little file where I have all the information. So with the first service, um, I have a name. And this is the location where I want to put the message to. 
Oh, sorry. First, I have to say it's a static resolver in this case. Oh, sorry, where are you? So here you are. Um, so, so this is uh, the location. So now I've already. I also added the resolver. Let me add it. And also, what I forgot is that I have to specify because you don't see it here in the on ramp. So I also have to specify the container, and with the container you specify where you're going to run it. So on which uh, on ramp or on this. I want to have it in the receive part, so now you also see the little. Uh, it changed it, uh, it changed a bit, and this is where. So hopefully, oh no, still not able to do it. Well, doesn't really matter. I can also do something like this. Okay. So, so hopefully. Um, I'm going to, first I'm going to validate it, and hopefully I don't have any errors. Well, I forgot something here. Um, the transport property value should not be empty or null. Transport name. So I think I forgot here something to specify. Well, I could do something like this uh, because is it? Okay, so now I can uh, export it. And what you see here is uh, I exported it to, um, I, to, the, to the database because an itinerary, uh, when you, uh, at runtime, uh, you want to uh, get the itinerary from a database. Um, so now we deployed it. And to be able to use it, um, you need an on-ramp or a receive port. Uh, I already created a receive port. So in this case, um, it's the dispatch advices uh, receive port. And what you have to do is you have to select uh, or use uh, a pipeline uh, from the ESB toolkit. Well, in this case, I, I'm using the itinerary select receive pass-through. And you also have to specify the name of the itinerary. So at runtime, um, it uses uh, this to to get the itinerary from uh, <clears throat> the itinerary store or the itinerary database. Because I've created the itinerary, I also have to restart uh, the receive host um, just to be sure. <coughs> So now, if everything is going to run uh, as I hope it's going to run, uh, it should work. I'm also going to start debug view. Uh, with debug view, uh, you can see uh, also uh, the tracking from the ESB toolkit. So if you're going to run it as an administrator, it should work. So now I'm going to um, put a file in the receive port. And I have a test file here, and it's a warehouse. It's a warehouse order. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put a dispatch advice here, and this dispatch advice I have to put here in a folder. Oh, this is your eh? what you always see: put a file in a folder with Bithark. Well. And it should disappear normally. So first, let me see if the receive port is running or everything is running. Well, it's gone. So <laughs> that part uh, succeeded. Um, and now we're going to see or what we're going to watch is the debug uh, view. So what we're seeing here is information that the, the itinerary services are added to um, <clears throat> um, 
or edit here we're seeing and here we're seeing information from the, my own custom tracking service so what we're seeing here is it's executed I'm also seeing here that it is stored in MongoDB and these are trace uh, output statements from my own uh, custom servers so it looks like everything uh, has run um, I'm also seeing here that the routing service is now executing uh, it's an orchestration service so well let's check if it's uh, really has run um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to open uh, MongoDB or MongoView and that's a tool uh, where you can see the content uh, of your database of your your MongoDB uh, database so here I'm going to connect well with MongoDB it's all about uh, collections so you're not with normal uh, SQL Server, you have uh, relational tables. Or uh, with MongoDB, you have a, a collection. And in this case, I'm putting everything in the warehouse collection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to so here we see a message. And well, the date is today. The time is correct. So here we have some context properties. Um, and also we see uh, the dispatch advice so it looks like everything is succeeded so that is, uh, that's great <laughs> the first sample uh, succeeded so let's go to the next well first uh, the next demo and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use our <coughs> And I'm going to create uh, an itinerary service using uh, an orchestration. So with the, with BizTalk, or sorry, with the ESB toolkit, you can also create a custom itinerary service by using orchestrations. Um, and orchestrations you can use in a lot of, or services that are based on orchestration, you can use in a lot of scenarios. Um, because with a messaging service, you need an off-ramp, or sorry, or an on-ramp or an off-ramp. Um, where you have to attach the service to and <clears throat> in this picture uh, and, and with an orchestration uh, service you, you don't need it eh? it listens to the message box so it's, it's much easier to use orchestration services uh, in the picture you see uh, a custom service that I've created uh, to, to send a message to multiple recipients um, so I've called it the recipient list service um, and in this case uh, I'm using um, I'm sending it to two uh, locations normally you can also do this out of the box but then uh, in that case you need two services so first um, if you if you want to transform your message you first need a transformation service um, because in the routing service um, well in some strange way I don't know why but you're not able to do it so um, so you need a, tr a transformation service and a routing service and then this service what I've created this this custom service uh, it combines these two services um, so w um, if you also specify a map in the resolver um, well you can also map um, your service or transform uh, sorry your message and also uh, route the message to a specific location so again a demo and in this demo um, um, I'm going to create uh, well the recipient list uh, orchestration well also I've uh, already done it for uh, for this orchestration um, well, again, you have to create an entry in the isb.config file. Um, then I'm going to add um, this service uh, to an itinerary, and we're going to run the example. So this is the second demo. The first demo uh, was called uh, Process Dispatch Advices. Oh, sorry, the first itinerary that I used was uh, called Process uh, Dispatch Advices. And I've created um, another itinerary 
with the same name, so I'm going to override uh, the other itinerary when this uh, when I finish this uh, itinerary. So in this itinerary, I'm going to add the custom uh, orchestration for the service. But first, let me show you uh, the orchestration service. So let's go. Let's close this solution. Now open the other solution. What I've created. So this is the call to recipient list. <clears throat> so when you want to use an orchestration and use it in an, um, 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 and when you want to create an, an, uh, an itinerary service of it, there are a couple of things what you have to do. Um, you have to use uh, XML document as your message type. So. Um, that's important because you want to reuse your service for multiple message types. So it's important not to use a specific message type. So your message type has to be uh, an XML document. Uh, and also, you have to create a filter, for example. So when I'm going here and watch the filter expression. And these are necessary um, for uh, the itinerary to, to be able to pick it up. So in this uh, case, I'm calling it a recipient list service, uh, and also um, the state has to be pending, and the service type has to be in orchestration. Well, there are a couple of things what you have to do. Um, first, you have to retrieve, uh, for example, uh, the resolvers. So and these are all, uh, you can do this uh, with the classes that, uh, that are provided for, uh, with the ESB toolkit. I'm going to loop through the resolvers here. Um, if a map is defined, I'm going to transform the message. I'm going to send the message. Uh, and in that, I'm using a dynamic port. And in the end, it's going to, sorry, it's going to see if, of, you have to define something for, hey, are there more itinerary steps? So are there more itinerary steps in my itinerary? And if there are more itinerary steps, I have to um, publish uh, the message to the message box so it can be picked up by the next itinerary service. And in the end, I also, um, so to do that, um, I have to advance, that's also here, I have to advance the itinerary service um, and all these code is necessary uh, for the ESP toolkit. Well, I'm not going to walk through all the code because uh, then we don't have uh, time anymore uh, for the other samples. Um, and if there is an, an, an error, then an exception, then um, it's routed <coughs> um, to the exception database. So to be able to use this, you have to deploy it uh, just like a normal orchestration. So deploy it to an application in BizTalk. Um, and also this service I'm going to use um, in an itinerary. So also in a live uh, demo. <laughs> so let me go to the other. So in this case, I already have a, a tracking uh, service. And now I want to add my custom recipient list service uh, to this. So I'm going to connect. And here um, I'm using uh, an orchestration extender. And let me see how I can do this. So I have, oh, I have here my recipient list and I'm so this is the location where I sent, want to send the message to. So with the first resolver is add new resolver. So I'm going to call this location one. And not make it too difficult. Also, I'm going to use a static resolver. Um, I'm going to send it to a file. So here I have to specify file. This is the first location, Despits advice. And I can also specify a map. So, and in this case, I'm going to 
a dispatch advice to uh, UBL. Um, so in this case, I also created the map to go to a UBL message. Um, and also want to create a copy. So I'm going to add a next service because in the orchestration, I'm looping through all the resolvers what I've created. So here I'm adding a new resolver. So let's call this location two. Um, and let me see. So again, static resolver also has to go to a file. And this is copy two. Okay. So, did I forget something? Um, the recipient list service, I have to specify. Well, I also have to rename this one. So now I've created a recipient list service. Um, I'm going to two locations. This is the name, process dispatch advisor. So let me validate it. And This is, and again, we have a little, I think what I've done here is, so, okay. Well, validation complete. So now I'm able to export it. If you want to override it, the custom, and that's because it has the same name as the last one. Um, so I'm overwriting the other one, what I've created. To be able to, um, <clears throat> and again, I have to um, restart uh, the receive port. And that's because um, the ESB toolkit caches um, uh, an itinerary. So it resolves an itinerary at runtime uh, and it caches it. So if you're, you're changing your itinerary, um, well, the, the, the fastest way uh, to change it is to restart your uh, <coughs> your host instance. So let's see um, if everything is going to work. So again, I have a test file. The dispatch advice, I'm using the same file to test it. I'm going in BizTalk, uh, warehouse folder. So first, it's going to track the message to MongoDB. Um, well, we're seeing that here. We're having the tracking service. Um, the message is stored in MongoDB, so that part worked. But now I'm using, or I added my own recipient list service. So this is a, an orchestration. The orchestration, hopefully, is going to uh, loop through uh, <coughs> the resolvers. So let's see if it works well. Here we have the first resolver. Um, and it's going to write it to this file, to the UBL. Uh, and also we, we have to go to the other one eh, because we have two resolvers. And here we have the copy. So let's see. Well, uh, in debug view, everything uh, seems to be fine. So let's see if it also to the results. Well, 23, it's now uh, 7 past 9. So this seems to work. And uh, hopefully also the copy. Uh, the copy was in warehouse dispatch advices. So, well, also this one uh, seems to <laughs> have run. So, well, that's uh, very nice. Uh, two out of four are, uh, already uh, did it uh, or already have run. So, uh, well, let's go to the next demo. So, creating custom resolvers. <clears throat> um, well, what you already saw is that the resolver feeds the itinerary um, service at runtime with information. And normally, you use a resolver to specify um, <clears throat> which map is going to execute, or uh, you also use it um, to specify it to which endpoint uh, you're going to send a message. Well, out of the box, you have, uh, well, several uh, resolvers. Um, so what I've shown you, 
showed you is that you you uh, um, the, the static resolver. Uh, I already showed you uh, uh, that resolver, but of course you also have UDDI, XPath, um, and also uh, uh, to get an itinerary. Um, you can use business rules. So there are several resolvers, but um, what all is also useful and what you don't have out of the box is, for example, uh, if you want to get information from SSO. Well, fortunately, uh, the deployment framework uh, did that for you. So if you want to get information from SSO with a resolver, uh, when you install um, the deployment framework, um, you get that resolver, so you can use that. <coughs> But what I'm going to talk about is uh, the Sentinet resolver. Um, because with the Sentinet resolver, um, you can uh, dynamically, uh, at runtime, um, get um, <coughs> the URL for a web service. So what is Sentinet? Well, Sentinet is uh, a product uh, from Nefatech, and you can use that uh, for SOA governance and API management. And <clears throat> you can use the Sentinet uh, SOA repository in combination with the Sentinet resolver uh, to get um, the URL for, uh, of a web service. Well, first, you have to store the web service in the Sentinet repository. And you also have to define a key for the service. <clears throat> and in the, with the ESB toolkit, uh, you can resolve the endpoint uh, of that web service with that unique key. <clears throat> and what we're gonna, what we really want is a demo, of course. Um, so in this demo, I'm going to store a web service in the Sentinet uh, SOA repository. Um, then I'm going to create a keyword uh, for the endpoint of that web service. Um, and we're going to use the Sentinet resolver in, uh, in Visual Studio. Um, I'm also going to test uh, the Sentinet uh, resolver in Studio, in Visual Studio, and normally um, that's not possible, but uh, Nefatech extended uh, the resolver, so now you're able to do it, so now you're, you're able to, to, um, to test it already uh, in Visual Studio. Um, and you don't have to deploy it uh, to test it. And then uh, we're going to um, uh, uh, <laughs> execute the itinerary service. <clears throat> so, back to BizTalk. <clears throat> so, first let me... Oh. So, first let's start... Uh, Sentinet, this is the, the repository of Sentinet. So here I'm an administrator. <clears throat> and first, what I'm going to do is add a web service to Sentinet. And let me see what the location is of the web service. So it's very easy uh, to add a service in uh, Sentinet. Uh, you have to specify uh, the whistle. So we have a little wizard. Well, in this case, it's the order service. Or the order service, I have uh, two methods. Or get orders by ID and receive orders. Well, when I click on finish, um, it's stored uh, in the repository. And now what I have to do is I have to add, um, to be able to use it with the resolver, I have to add a keyword. So let me see what the keyword is. Well, it's the warehouse service. Well, that's, that's the keyword I want to use. Um, what you also can do with Sentinet, but we don't have a lot of time, so um, um, I'm, I'm not going to, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to do it, but you can also create a, a virtual service in front of your service, 
Um, so you can add the keyword to the normal service, but you can also add the keyword to uh, the virtual service. Um, well, we don't have a lot of time uh, to do that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to um, <coughs> the original service. Um, well, to do that, you have to uh, you have to uh, the endpoint to modify the endpoint. I'm going to add a keyword to the service. Well, in this case, it's the warehouse service. So when I click on save, uh, it's added to the service. And now what I wanted to, to do is I want to use that uh, server, that key, or yeah, I want to get the location of the <clears throat> of the Bristol uh, with the resolver. So I'm going to I'm going back to BizTalk. I'm going to close this itinerary. Well, you can save it. And. Um, I already created the itinerary, so uh, in this case, it's a custom uh, service. Um, you can use the resolver in a messaging service. You can also use it in a in an orchestration service. Um, in this case, I'm, I've added the resolver, the Sentinet resolver, uh, to um, <coughs> to an orchestration service. So here you see the Sentinet resolver, and I also specified a map. But now you're also able to add a keyword. So what we're seeing here that the keyword is specific for the Sentinet resolver, and that's because they have extended and uh, Nefactac uh, extended um, the resolver. So now you have an extra key, an extra property. Uh, and in this case, it's a keyword. Uh, so at runtime, it uses this keyword to uh, to get uh, the location of the web service. And also, with, um, you're now able to test the service. So that's uh, that's very handy. So here, I'm able to test the resolver configuration. Well, normally you're not able to do it, but also because uh, Sentinet, or sorry, Nefatech uh, extended uh, the resolver, um, you were able to do it. So hopefully it's going to work. Oh, that's great. So what we're seeing here is the endpoint address. Um, well, you see more information of the resolver, and you can also see, um, <clears throat> I think you also see. Well, yeah, you also see, for example, uh, the map, um, the endpoint location, and how it's gonna and how it's gonna um, to run. Eh? It uses basic uh, HTTP, for example. Well, and what we also want to do is run the sample, uh, of course. <coughs> so I'm gonna export. Web service. Oh, sorry, the itinerary. Okay. So in this case, and I'm using another port to receive messages for the order service. So in this case, I'm using the Sentinet. So, so here you see the name of the itinerary plus order response. So when I put a message in Sentinet, uh, And first, it's going to map it. So you also see that, for example, here I'm mapping. First, I'm mapping a UBL order to uh, an order that is received by the web service, uh, and then it's going to send it to the message. So in this case, we need um, going to this test files. We need a UBL order. 
And also, don't forget, because I almost forgot it, uh, you have to restart your receive host. And this talk in Oh, sorry. Sentinet. And okay. Well, and we don't have enough time because it's already 20 past. So, but here we see um, that it's, uh, we see the execution of, um, well, is this what I want to show you? Yeah, what you hear, what you see is that it's resolved at runtime. So here we see the location of, um, of the web service. Uh, we see the map that is uh, received. It's a WCF custom. Um, and also it's um, it's now executed so we don't have enough time uh, to go go through all uh, the debug uh, output so this is also executed um, and now I want to go to the last uh, sample now it's going to be more complex so in the last sample um, I want to create a custom extender for an orchestration-based uh, itinerary service. And what you see here is I've created a, a validation service. That is uh, what I want to do here is I want to validate a message um, uh, with business rules. But what I've done is I've extended um, the itinerary designer in Visual Studio. So now I have uh, more properties, so I've, I can create my, my custom properties uh, in the itinerary designer. And in this case, what you see here is a policy um, and a document type. So now I'm able um, <coughs> to use these uh, custom uh, properties. <coughs> and that can be quite useful because normally with the ESB toolkit, uh, you use uh, a resolver in your orchestration uh, or in your uh, <coughs> messaging service. Um, but with an extender, um, you can set these properties directly on the itinerary service. So through this, you, you don't need uh, a resolver anymore. Um, and it can be quite useful because with a resolver, you normally get a, a map or an endpoint. But in this case, I'm also able to specify a business, rules po uh, business rule policy, uh, for example. Well, let's go to the demo because uh, we want to see, we're going to see it uh, running. And on this demonstration, you see that I'm going to create a custom extender for an itinerary service. Um, I'm going to validate uh, a message. Um, and also have to create a business rule policy uh, for the validation. Uh, and I'm going to add uh, the validation service to an itinerary and test itinerary. And that all in eight minutes, <laughs> hopefully. So the last demo. It's quite complex, so hopefully we're, uh, <laughs> we have enough time. Um, first, let me open the project. So uh, this is the validation service. And now we're going to create a custom extender. So with a custom extender, is based on the extender uh, well, provisioning based. And what you're, for example, able to do is that you can pick your own color. Yeah? So for normally when you create an orchestration service, uh, they are green, messaging services are blue. But when you create your custom extender, you can also pick your own uh, color, for example. So here we're, I've used the pale violet red. It's a very nice color. 
Um, and also, I'm able to create, yeah, what I also want to do is um, create custom properties. So here what we see is, uh, for example, a property for a business rule policy and a property for a document type. And these properties are stored in the itinerary. So when you <clears throat> use it at runtime, these properties are stored in the itinerary uh, and you can pick them up uh, in your own custom uh, orchestration service. <clears throat> So, how can I use these properties uh, in Visual Studio? First, what you have to do is you have to build uh, um, and create a DLL. And that DLL you have to copy uh, to a folder in Visual Studio. So, let me go to the last service. So, first, let me go to the folder. So this is the DLL. And let me open another folder. And this is the DLL of Visual Studio where I have to put DLL. So this is Continue. So, what we're seeing here is the extensions of Visual Studio, and here you have to put the DLL. But now, to be able to use it, you have to close Visual Studio and open it again, because else it, uh, it doesn't see it. So, we're going to close the solution. And I think we, yeah, Let's see, we have two Visual Studios. So, close the solution and also close. So now, when I restart, or when I open Visual Studio again, hopefully you're going to see it. So, open Visual Studio. Um, let me go to the itineraries. I also created a custom validation service. Well, well, let me let me also show you that. So the validation service. So first, let me show you the the orchestration service that I've created. So these are the extenders. And here in the orchestration service, we have a custom service. And this service is a lot easier than um, the last one because uh, we don't have resolvers, what we need to walk through. Because um, I've used, because with the extenders, I'm able uh, to set the properties directly uh, on the service. So I have to execute uh, the rule engine, execute the, uh, the policy, the document type. Um, so I need to, to specify the policy and the document type. And if the message is valid, um, <clears throat> well, it advances it to the next uh, itinerary service. But if it's false, it's going to create a custom exception with the message error, what you get back from the business rule engine. Um, and the exception is going to uh, to the database, to, to the error, to the exception database uh, of ESP toolkits. So, well, let's see if we're able to use um, the extenders in, the, in an itinerary. And this is the last one. So what we're seeing here is the tracking service, and we see the recipient-less service. But what if we also want to validate our message? Well, this is a nice location. So first, we have to validate the message. And if the message is valid, uh, we have to send the message to the recipient-less service. So let me add 
another itinerary service. And now I want to be able um, uh, to extend it or to use the extender. So let me see if it's also here. Yeah. So here we have the business rule uh, extender. And now we're seeing that uh, also the color has changed. Uh, it's pill, what was it? Pill, variant red or something. <laughs> Um, we also have uh, the, the custom properties, so we have the policy property, we also have the document type. Um, so let's see, what do we, uh, we also first connect it, that seems nice. Connect it. We have to specify the properties, so in this case I'm using Microsoft Any. I don't need the resolver. This is the document type. Um, I also need to specify the policy, the business rule policy. So this is the business rule policy I'm going to run. This is the custom validation server that I've created. So let me also rename this one. So I think we're good to go now. Um, Last thing I also want to show you, oh, we're, al uh, we're almost out of time, so very quickly let me show you the business rule. So I already created the business rule, it's also published, and the business rule is going to check a contact. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks for, uh, for joining in. Um, so it's going to check if a contact uh, exists uh, in the dispatch advice, and if the dispatch advice uh, well does not exist, it's going to run an error. So I think we're almost there, guys. Uh, maybe two, two or three minutes. Uh, so first, let me see if the the it's going to run the sample. Um, so let me execute this one or sorry, export this one. Well, it's over, uh, so it's overrided the other one. Um, the receive host, we have to restart. And I, I have a good feeling about this one. I have a good feeling. So hopefully it's gonna run. Um, dispatch advice, we need a dispatch advice. So it's in BizTalk test files and dispatch fetch suffice that doesn't have a contact so normally you have a contact this one doesn't have well let's put it in um, so it's in the warehouse folder okay so um, first in MongoDB and then we have the custom validation service and here we have the contact doesn't exist. So um, we have an error in the message. Uh, the contact doesn't exist. It creates a custom exemption. The exemption goes to uh, exception database. <clears throat> well, we don't have time. Well, I can show you. Uh, it only takes a minute and then uh, just to be sure, we want to be sure it's going to, if it that has run. So let's go to databases, exception database, uh, tables. So we have to go to the full table. Well, you can use a. Um, hey, it looks like it has run. <laughs> Let's go to the date. Yeah, it's uh, the date of today, 32. So here we see the contact doesn't exist. Well, I'm using the database, but um, of course uh, you can use the portal. Uh, what also is um, what ESB toolkit. It's not really a very good portal, uh, but also Bistock 360 uh, has uh, a very nice uh, ESB portal uh, in it. So you can also use the ESB uh, portal uh, from uh, Bistock 360 uh, um, to see uh, the full table. Okay, 
so this is the last um, sample that I've uh, created or one I wanted to show you um, I have some links uh, all these samples that that, that you saw uh, were based on uh, blog posts and uh, samples uh, that I've posted on uh, MSDM um, yeah you can use these links um, if you want to um, to get the code um, so um, well you saw that it was uh, <laughs> very easy uh, to use it um, so hopefully um, you're going to download it and you're going to play with it yourself. Um, so let's go to the questions. Um, I think there's a website created. Um, so this is the website where you can go to if you have questions. Um, okay, thanks. <laughs> um, well, let's go to, uh, to the website and see if there are some questions. I don't know if there are some questions. Um, I think I can go to this one, maybe also the chat box. 